On Friday, the National Association of Realtors agreed to a settlement that will cause a massive shift in the real estate sector and for individuals looking to buy or sell homes. This not only affects me as a real estate broker, but also you as a consumer. So in this video, I'll be breaking down the five key points you should be aware of regarding this shift. In order to understand what changes are happening, you first need to have a general understanding of the current commission structure for real estate agents. Traditionally in the US, before listing a property for sale, the seller and their agent decide on the commission rate. This commission is then divided between the agent that represents the seller and then also the agent that represents the buyer after the sale closes. This rate has always been negotiable. There are flat fee brokerages out there. There are brokerages that will request a percentage of the sales price for their services. A benchmark for these fees has never been set, but historically has totaled between five and 6% of the home's selling price. To make this make sense, a universal analogy that I can think of to compare this to is getting your hair done. If you were to call around to salons and barber shops and ask how much it would be to cut your hair, to have a haircut done, the price would vary depending on the professional doing your hair and how much they charge for their service. Although the service, which is a haircut, should be pretty similar regardless of who you go with, prices may differ, but in general will likely average out to around the same price. The exact same has been the case for commissions when selling a house. With no fixed commission rates set, commissions have always been negotiable and have varied depending on the realtor hired and how they value their services. That is where the historical average of sellers paying five to six percent of their home's sales price has come from. Using these figures, the seller of a home priced at $400,000 could be responsible for commission fees ranging from $20,000 to $24,000 if the agreed upon rate was set somewhere between five and six percent. This setup has been in practice because it has restricted the seller's agent from offering lower rates to the buyer's agent as it might deter the buyer's agent from showcasing the property. Additionally, buyers have not necessarily needed to discuss commission rates with their agents as they're not directly involved in that specific agreement. Controversy has recently arisen over a rule that mandates sellers to declare exactly how much they're willing to pay a buyer's agent in listings on the multiple listing service, better known by industry professionals as the MLS. This practice has been scrutinized by consumer advocates and the Department of Justice alike. It was challenged in a Missouri antitrust lawsuit against the National Association of Realtors and some of the country's leading brokerages. The lawsuit itself argued that this requirement, meaning sellers having to disclose exactly how much they're offering the buyer as agent, violates antitrust laws and artificially inflates commissions. The National Association of Realtors, whom I'll be referring to as NAR, facing a lawsuit, has agreed to a settlement without admitting any wrongdoing. The settlement involves paying out $418 million over approximately four years to resolve what they're saying could have ultimately been a judgment of more than $5 billion. In addition to the payout, NAR will be implementing changes to how commissions are advertised and agreed upon. The biggest change is that sellers will no longer be required to publicly advertise in the MLS the commission amount that is being offered for the buyer's agent. Instead, agreements will be made privately between buyers and their agents that detail the cost of services and payment methods for those services. These changes are expected to be implemented by mid-July, but like all settlements of class action litigation, are subject to court approval. While the adjustment to new commission models may take time to fully materialize, the consensus is that commission rates are going to be on the downward trajectory. This decrease will come as buyers gain a better understanding of agent costs and sellers are freed from making a universal payment offer to buyer's agents. The shift could lead to savings amounting to 
billions of dollars every single year for home sellers and buyers as commission costs could decrease by more than two percentage points, according to some analysts. This new landscape opens the door to more personalized negotiations over buyer agent fees rather than a one size fits all approach. Sellers might leverage this flexibility to their advantage during negotiations, either potentially reducing their expenses when selling by only offering compensation for the agent that represents them directly, or enhancing the desirability of their home when selling by still covering the buyer's agent fees. Keep in mind that sellers are no longer going to be required to disclose how much they're willing to pay a buyer's agent, but they still can. Buyers, meanwhile, will need to have contractual agreements with their agents, listing out services and the costs associated with them, making a departure from the traditional model where the buyer's agent fees were indirectly covered by the seller. Now that we've made it through all of the technicalities, let me strip this down to some practical, real-world changes I believe you can expect. With sellers no longer having to advertise compensation for buyer's agents, we will likely see a handful of sellers in the future refuse to pay buyer's agent compensation. Now on the flip side, buyers even previously have entered into contractual agreements with their agents. These are commonly referred to as buyer agency agreements. Realtors have used these agreements in their business in a variety of ways. For example, when I work with a buyer, we discuss buyer agency agreements upfront when doing our home buyer consultation. For me, this comes before we ever even look at a house because I want to discuss the process with you and make sure that we are on the same page. In that agreement, my commission fee is outlined even if I happen to be collecting it from the seller, just because I like the transparency. Now, there have been a handful of realtors who have not been using these agreements at all, or if they do, they use them and they haven't really been taking the time to discuss the agency relationship, what it means, the services it entails, and overall how much it costs. That will be changing. Although I personally believe that all realtors should have been having these conversations and getting these contracts signed regardless, you better believe that with no guarantee of compensation from sellers, agents will likely be having their buyer clients sign agency contracts moving forward because that's the only guarantee that serving you as a client is going to ultimately end up with a paycheck in the end. In my opinion, for buyers, it will likely feel as though having a buyer's agent represent you, which has historically felt like something that has come at no cost, will now have a fee associated with it. But it's only natural that if agents now have to compete for your business and paying your agent becomes your responsibility as a buyer, that buyer's agent compensation will reduce. It's just kind of like supply and demand. People are going to compete for your business and they'll say, OK, well, if so and so is going to do it for you know this amount of money, maybe I'll do it for this amount of money, a little bit lower to, to, to win your business. In a practical sense, as a buyer, when you hire a realtor to represent you, you will know the cost associated with that. It may be a flat fee moving forward. It may be a percentage of your purchase price, or it could be something else entirely. We're not really sure how all of this is going to materialize. What I want you to realize is that your realtor's commission as a buyer will now be an additional fee that's going to be grouped in with your closing costs, where typically it was on the seller and the seller's closing costs. Now, just as you have always been able to negotiate in your offer that the seller pays all or a portion of your closing costs, that will still remain true. It is worth noting, though, that when making an offer on a house for sale, when you ask the seller for a credit towards your closing costs, that it is money out of the seller's pocket. So just know that if you were to make a $400,000 offer on a house and request that the seller pay your closing costs and your agent commission, or even, or your agent commission, 
that offer would net the seller less money and look potentially less attractive than a $400,000 offer from a different buyer who's not requesting those extra items from the seller as part of the offer. Even though the offers are technically the same price, more money would end up in the seller's pocket for selling their home. While the direct payment structure to agents, meaning buyers pay their own agents, sellers pay their own agent, could lead to savings for both buyers and sellers, it's uncertain whether home prices are going to decrease as a result. Historically, agent fees have been incorporated into the overall home prices, meaning that if you're a seller, you list your house for $500,000, you know that you will be paying agent commissions out of the proceeds from that sale. That's what they mean by incorporated into the overall home sale prices. A move away from this model could theoretically lower costs for consumers. However, other market dynamics like current low housing supply might maintain high home prices despite the reductions in the commission fees. The real impact is going to depend on how the housing market adjusts to these overall new practices. In my opinion, moving forward, I'm going to continue to provide my services as a real estate broker. I will protect, educate, negotiate for my clients, whether they be a buyer or a seller, to the very best of my ability. But I don't work for free, I never have, and I think that that's understandable. Just as I wouldn't expect to walk into a hair salon and get my hair cut for free, I would pay for that service. My gut reaction to this is that I'm let down as a realtor not necessarily at all because of the changes. In fact, I kind of like the changes because I'm a huge advocate for transparency and everyone understanding the real estate processes, but rather I'm let down regarding the way that the National Association of Realtors has handled the lawsuits. The organization is still claiming to have proposed this settlement to, in their words, exact words, reduce the significant strain on our members and provide a path forward for the industry. They also state, we continue to believe that the cooperative compensation and NAR's current policies are good things that benefit buyers and sellers. They promote access to property ownership, particularly for lower and middle income buyers who have a difficult enough time saving for a down payment. With this settlement, NAR is confident it and its members can still achieve all those goals. Obviously, I'm not in the courtroom for these cases, but it's sad to me that the National Association of Realtors is still preaching to us agents that they believe that the current policies are good and that there has been no wrongdoing. Meanwhile, they were quick to propose a settlement instead of defending the policies that they encourage us to implement in our practice every day. When I sit down with a prospective buyer or seller and I lay out my worth as a realtor, clearly explaining the costs associated with my services, I rarely get pushback. My clients hire me because they value my knowledge, expertise, and they trust that I am going to represent their best interests. It's disheartening to know that we as realtors, in my opinion, seem to believe in ourselves more than the association seems to. Because when they had the opportunity to go to bat for us and defend the current policies that they suggested and advised we implement in the first place, they didn't. As a realtor, seeing the National Association of Realtors quickly propose this settlement, you know, and quickly say that we're going to pay out, you know, $418 million, it's, it just seems like a lot considering that they're still trying to say that there's been no wrongdoing. It's contradictory in my mind personally. So I want to know, how do you think that these changes will affect you when buying or selling? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I will continue to report updates as they come. My name is Nicole Nark. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.